Hello friends, my name is Colby Sharp. I am a fifth grade teacher in Michigan and I am so excited because this evening we are talking with Newberry Medal winning author Meg Medina, the author of Mercy Suarez Changes Gears, which captured so many of our hearts back in 2018. And, and Mercy and the whole crew is back and I think they're better than ever in this follow-up book. Mercy Suarez can't dance. And I even have post-its. I came prepared. I'm not a post-it person, but I have some things to talk to Meg Medina about tonight. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring Meg in right now. We're going to chat for 20 or 30 minutes. If you have to go, feel free to save this link and you can watch it at any time. Meg, how are you? Oh, wonderful. Getting close to bedtime on my side of the yeah. country. But um, yeah, I'm ready. How Isn't are you? That, I'm I'm doing all right. Isn't that a loaded question right now? How are you? Yes. <laughs> so. Yes, it is. And you can always tell when it's it's it, when there's that pause. And yeah. the and the usual answer is well. Yeah. As well as can be expected, you know, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But it's so good to see you. It's so great to see you. And the last time I believe that I saw you was either at NCTE or Nerd Camp. I can't remember. But I think it was Nerd Camp. Yeah. And since then, you've won a Newberry Medal and you have just quite, quite the couple of years. And we are back, and you brought them back. You have given us seventh grade with yeah. mercy. <laughs> I did. I did. I wanted to ask you about that. I wanted to ask you if you think I got seventh grade right. You don't teach seventh grade. I think you teach fifth, don't you? I what have you a seventh. Teach? I have to teach fifth, but I have a seventh grader. Oh. Yeah. So you'll have to tell me. What do you think? Did I get it right? I will tell you this, and I, I tweeted this, so you may have seen this. I have not felt more present reading a book in 13 months. Like I have not enjoyed the experience of reading since this like this since before the pandemic and a large part if not all of that is is the book and maybe the place that i'm at having been vaccinated and school kind of rolling and just enjoying my time at school but to spend 370 plus pages in in this world and and here's the thing meg i don't read sequels i like my books to be 220 pages uh, I like to read about fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. So seventh grade is right on the edge. And somehow you found a way to just hit me right here. So thank you for this beautiful story. Uh, before we get into talking about it much more, I do want to share uh, this pre-order campaign that Candlewick is doing. Did they tell you about this? I'm sure they probably did. They did. They did. And I'm so excited. And they were giving it to you first. So yeah, do you, you know, want to I'll let you do the honors. I'll do it. Yeah. Oh, so, well, I, I'm half. Go, go ahead. Go, go. You do it. You do so, it. Uh, and I just dropped it in the chat. If you're, yeah, so it should be show up as a comment oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, wherever you're watching. But Candlewick is doing something that I think is pretty amazing. They are giving away a hardcover copy of the Newberry Medal winning book, Mercy Suarez Changes Gears. This one right here with the shiny sticker. They're giving a copy away to anyone who pre-orders Mercy Suarez Can't Dance in the next two weeks. That's amazing. That's right. So that's like a $15, $16 book plus shipping that they are just giving you. And all you have to do is buy an amazing book. So you buy an amazing book and then you get a new the Newberry Medal winning book for free. Like they will mail it to you. And all you have to do is go to that link. There's a little form. I checked it out. It's pretty simple. Just fill out your information, pr pr prove that you bought the book and you can buy it from your local bookstore. You can buy it wherever books are sold. Is that right? Did I get it right? You did. You got it perfectly right. And for anyone from Candlewick who's listening, thank you a million times. That is just such a beautiful thing to do um, to sort of invite people into the whole Mercy Suarez universe. So yeah, I think I that's the idea behind it, you know, include, you know, I, I don't know how, how it is for you, but sometimes, you know, a book comes out and, you know, it's, it, it, it wins or a lot of people are talking about it. And my, my to be read stack is enormous, probably like yours, right? So sometimes it takes me a while to get to a book. 
right? So, um, you know, for those folks who are not, haven't read Mercy Suarez Changes Gears yet, or who have and loved it and want to share it with someone at the same time that they're going to get um, the next installment of Mercy, I think this is really kind of a fun way to do it. We always have something fun. We roll out these books in the, the most fun way. I don't know if you remember at Nerd Camp, I was waiting for Mercy Suarez Changes Gears to come out. And I was so nervous that for your auction, I made a whole bunch of um, handmade uh, remember, bookmarks. Yeah. They were book bunks and, and you guys auctioned them off. And I put a little, whoever got them has a little note from me that says, I did this when I was just dying of worry over this book, um, which is how it is when you write a book. Um, and you send it out into the world. You just, you love the characters so much and you just hope with everything inside you that they're gonna connect with with people. So, um, you know, and now this time we have a, a free copy of Mercy going out. So it's fun. It's fun it's to fun. send it out with these little prizes. <laughs> yeah, um, and you being nervous, it looks, it seems like it, it turned out okay for you, right? Like it's been a, <laughs> it's worked out. Yeah. So yeah. for the people who haven't heard of the sequel and don't know about Mercy Suarez Can't Dance, could you just give us a quick book talk of what readers can expect in this new book? Yes. So when last we left Mercy uh, in the sixth grade, um, she was she had tangled with Edna Santos and she had um, sort of come to terms with where her grandfather was. But that was the end of sixth grade. And now seventh grade is upon us. And for anybody who, who has been in middle school or has taught middle school, you know that there is a huge difference from what who we are as sixth graders to who we are as seventh graders and then ultimately, you know, eighth grade. It's just so vast that I felt like there were going to be so many things that Mercy learned. So this year in seventh grade, Ms. McDaniel shows up with this business proposition Mercy's going to be running the school store, the Ram Depot, that formerly used to just sell pencils. But it's up to Mercy with, you know, her serious business chops to figure out how to make this a really thriving school store. And she's got this business partner named Wilson Bellevue, which a guy who she may or may not like, if she could actually understand what that means. And she's figuring that out. Um, so. There's that piece. She's uh, tangling with Edna some more because Edna's in charge of the heart ball, the big Valentine's Day dance. And of course, Lolo continues in his progression um, with Alzheimer's. I don't know. So many things happened to her in the seventh grade, but I think that mostly she's figuring out the L word, which is um, love in all of its forms. Most importantly, I think like self-love ultimately, right? How to love yourself, how to forgive yourself when you make mistakes because you're gonna. Um, how to love friends. How, what to make, how, how you make sense of like the love between your parents and grandparents. Um, and then like all that squishy, uh, embarrassing love, the secret crushes you have, the first crushes you have on actual people you know, not just pretend people. Um, so it's all that. It's all that in one book. Just like the first book was like this big swirling soup of life. It's the same sort of feeling, but now it's the seventh grade and the stakes are higher. Yeah. I don't know. What, is that what you think the book's about? What do you think? Yeah, I I do. I, I found um, so many magical scenes. Uh, I think the scene that I just kind of like the scenes when she's seeing her family members kind of differently, like when she sees her parents kissing um, later in the book and when she, like the scene where she sees her grandparents dancing is just such a magical um, event. And it's so interesting to me because I often as a reader struggle when there's lots of characters, you know, I have, all of these characters in my life and my students and my, I have six cats and five children and there's just a lot of people. <laughs> and then to read a book where a lot of times you're spending, you know, three to six days reading it. Um, 
I often struggle and I talk to my students about that a lot and I share with them strategies that I do. But you have so many characters in this book and it's I was just fascinated by how you were able to bring all of them into the story where they're so easy to like I was never confused by who was who mm-hmm. and I all of these it was just like this 10,000 piece puzzle in 370 pages. I don't know how how do you fit it all together? I don't understand how you like sometimes it's like I will write or I write with my kids or write in my notebook and then I will read like something that you write. I'm like, this is impossible. Like it doesn't even seem possible what you're able to do. Like how how do you how do you weave all of these? There's so many stories. Like, and if you take one out, like I just feel like this the book would be missing so much. Like, how do you weave all that together? I don't understand. Well, here, here it is. It's really kind of, it's interesting because it really boils down to managing, right? A big cast, but you said it yourself. Look at your own life, Colby, right? You have, how many children do you have? I think it's five, right? Yeah. Okay. So you have five kids and a spouse and lots of um, people in your life. You have a boss, you have neighbors, you have like Every day you have to negotiate that. And so when I'm writing for kids, I'm trying to recreate their life, right? I'm trying to really draw it the way it is. And so um, I do the same thing. I, I zero in for each person on their essence, if I can, the thing that makes them sing in the world, so to speak that you'll always recognize as that person's thing. And so I make sure that that's really present in the character. I try to make it so that no two characters are doing the same heavy lifting in the book, right? So if I have characters that are very similar, and we see this when kids are writing their stories, right? Sometimes the characters are doing the same thing. You can mix those two characters and create one, right? That that has this one sort of job in the book. So I, I sort of do it like that. But mostly, you know, I just fall in love with them. And I let them talk. And when they come on stage, because that's how it plays in my mind when I'm writing it, when they come on stage, I let them have their moment. You know, I let their voice come out. I let um, I let them have their moment to be the star. Because everybody's a star at some point, right, in your life. It, it just, they have that thing they say, or the the moment they win something or that particularly, you know, strong tantrum or whatever it is, but they have their moment. And so I try to let them have that and, and, you know, just make them real and and relatable so that you can, I don't know, they feel like you know them, even though they're pretend. I wonder if I'm making it too complicated. Like, I'm wondering if you just let them be who they are. Like Mm. if maybe that's what I love so much about it, it just, like like you said there's just so much going like this is just the people in her life and when they come in yeah. and out and uh and I, I kept thinking like i could spend 370 pages with any one of these characters like i kept thinking like gary smith wednesday war is okay for now like i kept thinking like oh like I could have a, like, I would take a book with any of these, like a companion book, right? Like this is a, I would take a companion book. Like I will spend forever in this world that you've created, Meg Medina. So you write what you want That is a danger. That's a danger. That's a danger because as you can see, I was not able to let them go. I started this family in Soul Painting Inc. in an anthology, right? It was a short story, right? Flying Lessons, another story. And so- they started with soul painting and then I couldn't let the Swatis go and they became Medici Swatis changes gears. I couldn't let them go. Now they're Medici Swatis um, can dance. And, and I'm working on the final book, um, her eighth grade year um, now. So with the same fear and the same anxiety that I not mess it up yeah. because kids, kids, create a relationship they get invested with these characters in the story and i feel like medicine medicine is a a good guide for them at this moment as they're figuring out how to grow up and so i want to make sure that these three books 
that she does the job with all of the mistakes that she makes, but that she does, you know, a really good job for them. That when they finish, ultimately, they're they're gonna feel a sense of peace mm. and um and ha- and com- completion. You know, yeah. it's hard. <laughs> I can't. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just terrified, think, Colby. I, I, uh, I think you'll do. I, I believe in you. Uh, so I actually want to look at a couple of scenes from the book, two that I just thought were just the most, two of the most beautiful scenes. Um, and like you said, how mercy is a guide. Like I felt so much, I felt like I was like a kid, like, you know, I'm like this football playing kid. I'm like, I could have used this. Like I could have like, like this would have been really helpful. So uh, I'm gonna do you do you I can read a little bit if that's okay. It feels weird, but so I'm looking at chapter no. 17. So um I'll just read a few paragraphs. Back in fourth grade, mommy gave me the big talk about love and bodies and babies. She had diagrams and everything. I was horrified, especially at all the body parts inside me that I didn't know about, didn't know about and what they're supposed to do together with someone else's. Do I have to do that? I asked. My stomach was heaving. No, she said, but one day you'll be grown and in love and it won't seem terrible at all. One day, when was that? But here's a thing that drives me nuts about mommy. She didn't say a thing about the stuff I wanted to know about, like holding hands or kissing for the first time or going out and breaking up over and over again the way Michael and Rachel do all the time or about liking boys or girls or neither or both. It's like she skipped the most important part of the story and went all scientific with words like ovum and sperm and made my hair stand on end. So that was so fascinating to me because that just seemed like, yep, that's what we do as parents, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. like, you know, that's, I've done that as a parent. And I was thinking like, but that is so true. Like kids don't like, that just seems so real. Like those feelings were so real. So where does that come from? Or where do you, like, how does one even come up with that? Like, I don't understand. Um, Part of it is from my own experience. I remember feeling, you know, as I was growing up, just, just so mortified about talking about any of this with my mother. It just was was the worst possible scenario as far as I was concerned. But also, you know, I am a mom. I have um, a son and two daughters, all grown now. And so I did exactly what you probably have done with your kids. You know, you, you over explain, you, you read all the books on how to talk to your kids about things the proper way. You want to make sure your kids have all the information, you know, all of this stuff. And really they have um, sometimes simpler questions like, um, do your teeth bang together when you kiss? Um, you know, what do you do if your hand is too sweaty? Um, you know, like things like that, really, really simple, simple kinds of things. Um, so I, again, I just try to inhabit what I, what I saw in my children when I made missteps, um, what I felt as a kid, um, the disconnect, the, the horror at watching my body change. I was a girl in my own life. I liked being sporty. I liked playing with the boys. I liked kickball. I liked getting dirty. Like the, those were the things that I that I enjoyed. And then my body betrayed me. I started to grow up. And then there was this weird switch that that happened. And it wasn't okay to just hang around with the boys and play anymore. And jokes got lewd and like every, all the rules changed right underneath me. So in this book, I'm sort of examining those moments too, like trying to understand um, that enormous change and that's happening all around you, but at different rates. And so you don't even know where to look for information. You know, you're just bewildered and, and doing your best. Yeah. It just felt so honest 
like her thoughts. Like she just felt, you just feel like she's such a genuine and authentic person. Like it's so weird that you just made her up. To me. I like her too. Yeah. <laughs> Even when she fouls it up, I like her too. Um, I try to make her less likable sometimes in the seventh grade than she was in the sixth grade. Um, because that happens too. Yeah, she had her and moments. To, yeah, yeah. She had her moments. And and you have to write those really honestly because otherwise we have kids who feel really um like they're monsters or something. And the fact is that they will be monsters some days. And then they the important thing to teach them is to come back to themselves and remake themselves mm -hmm. and try again and be better and and just learn about yourself. So, you know, I, I try to, to do that too. But but I do like Mercy. She's um she's been a really fun companion. She's yeah. in my imagination. Yeah. Well, this brings me to my second paragraph. This is so Mercy okay. has been having some issues with her friends and they're starting to maybe make up. Mm. And so, so going back a little bit here, Lena slings her arm around both our shoulders. So we're good. I hold my breath waiting. When you fall and hurt yourself, it takes a few days for the scrape to heal or the bruise to disappear. Maybe it's the same with friend fights. Slowly, Hannah puts in her fist and we all follow. We bump a closed hand potato and pull back with wiggly finger french fries. Then we go back inside to finish our work. Forgiven, if still a little tender. That's like really good. Like that's, it's, that's just so beautiful. Thank you. Like Thank I just- you. That want, is how it is. Yeah, right? And as a fifth grade teacher, friendships are the hardest thing from if he, from many of my like from eight thirty to three thirty, it is hard. Like, <laughs> yeah. I feel like ninety nine percent of the issues that I have in class are trying to help kids with that, with being a friend, with like new friend. Like that is such a tricky thing. Like a someone goes to someone else's house. Mm -hmm. It's just so hard. So I'm thankful yeah. for for little pieces of stories like that where kids can see that they don't have to have it all figured out. Well, it's thanks. really hard. Yeah. Yeah. I think the friend fights are hard. And when there are three friends, you know, and, and the shifting alliances and who likes, she likes this person better than she likes me, like all of those things. And then just competition, like all of those, those things are real. So my hope is, so here it is on the page, right? And and your kids are reading this book during quiet reading time or in their bedroom at night and their wheels are turning. Not only about Mercy and Hannah and Lena and Edna, but about themselves, like who they are and how to, how to work things through. Like that's the, my dream, right? That's the dream that the book is used by kids sort of, um, you know, on their own. And also like in, in discussions, like when you have book talks in, in classrooms and libraries about the things that really matter. I mean, for those conversations though, I, I really feel like it depends. I'm sure your classroom is this way, but it also depends on the climate, right? Mm -hmm. That the teachers created there to be able to be honest and to bring your raw self forward. Um, but if we can create those climates and, and if we can allow books to help us do that, what a beautiful thing, right? Because it's a relief. It's such a relief when this thing that you're carrying around, you realize isn't just you. Oh my gosh. That there are other people who feel this, right? It just feels better. That's what I think. I remember my big first friend fight. You know who it was with? I don't. Um, and she actually know. Okay, it was with R.J. Palacio. It was with Raquel, um, the author of Wonder. We were um, childhood friends and we, we were in the same class. 
I don't remember what our fight was about. I, it was around our birthdays and, and it involved a sleepover and who was going to have a sleepover. And before you knew it, the class was like in a war over this, over our stupid fight. Um, and then I, I, to this day, I don't, I'll have to ask her how it is that we made up and so on. I love her dearly. So we obviously did make up, but, but I remember the loneliness and that, that, radioactive feeling of being in a classroom when you're angry with your friend and you can't concentrate on spelling or math or anything else when you're so angry and all of those sparks are flying out of your head so yeah i mean it's really potent i'm sure it, I, i'm sure you have your work cut out for you yeah. with your students she probably just told you that you needed to choose kind and then everything was good <laughs> and yeah. then i hit her no yeah. no 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 she was fabulous back then, though. She was really fun. She was really talented. She used to draw horses all the time, and we used to act out Greek myths. Our favorite book was, I'll show it to you. This one. I still have oh, yes. it. Yep. We used to read this book all the time and act out the stories, complete with, like, tinfoil helmets and everything else. And, um, you know, just just play. And she was a great athlete. So we were outside a lot and so on. So we, we had a lot in common and, and, you know, we also fought. So. <laughs> and it turned out. Okay. It turned out. Okay. We both turned to writing. So I don't know. There was something good in the, in the water at PS 22 in Queens. Cause we both, we both ended up um, turning to children's books and the arts and um, just sort of capturing this time in people's lives that we both think is sacred. Now, that's fascinating to me. Does the school like realize that you both went to school there? Because I would be so that I mean, if it was our school, you would have like a stat, you'd have like statues out front. And <laughs> thank you. That's what we think. Um, I think we. Uh, I I don't know if they contacted us. I know we. we it, we've come to their attention. And there was a picture of us. We did, the New York Times did a beautiful um, piece on our friend about our friendship. And the picture that ran with that article was us hanging off the fence right in our old schoolyard where we used to play at PS22. Yeah, That's... in Flushing, New York. <laughs> Do you think yeah. um, that kid would have liked this book? You as a kid? Yeah. I did, I really did love reading. I had I had a hard time sitting still, honestly. I wasn't, I wouldn't say I was ADD, but I was just involved in a million things. I always just was on the move. But there was something about books that, um, and story and just being transported that I really loved. But I do remember the moment that I read Judy Bloom's Are You There God, It's Me, Margaret. And that's a, you know, was a contemporary book in, in a way similar to, to Mercy in that it's talking, you know, speaking the story of, of now, right? And it felt like, like a forbidden, beautiful release. Like there was a chapter in it where she's criticizing her mother for making packaged cakes or whatever, right? And all I could picture was my mother with her Proctor Silex uh, blender making me yellow cake mix, for which I was grateful. She always let me have the thing so that I could, you know, have my salmonella induced um, <laughs> treat. But I, you know, I, I was getting to that place of being in constant um, knocking heads with my mom. And, you know, there were so many complicating factors, you know, for me at the time, because my mom didn't speak English, because, oh. um, you know, there were a lot of money, money problems and so on. And so there was a lot of shame that I carried around about my family and, and my mom and, and so on, that I, that there were no books to really help me work that piece out. So I think had I had more books, that had characters that sort of reflected um, my culture and language. And so I, I think I would have felt more accompanied on the journey, mm. you know, of, of growing up than I, than I did. Well, I'm thankful that but, today's kids have that, that they can be accompanied mm -hmm. by mercy. 
I have one last question, but before that, I want to mention for anyone who's joining later or watching this at another time, uh, Meg's publisher has been kind enough to offer an amazing opportunity for you. If you pre-order this amazing book, Mercy Suarez Can't Dance, Kendallwick is going to give you, mail you, while supplies last, mail you a copy of the Newbery Medal winning book, Mercy Suarez Changes Gears. And like the hardcover, like not like they have like some old arcs left in a box in the warehouse. Like they are going to mail you a hardcover copy. I'm going to leave a little comment here now uh, with the link. All you have to do is sh share your proof of purchase with them between now and I believe it's April 5th and they will send you that copy in the mail. So I think what an amazing way uh, to continue on with getting this book into the hands of as many kids as possible. And if you're new, uh, I think you could actually read these books in any order. Like I think this book definitely stands alone, um, but oh, reading yeah. it in order, I think is a beautiful thing. Yeah, because I like was remembering so much as I read it, but I was like, I probably could be fine without knowing this. So yeah, I definitely think the book stands alone masterfully. Uh, thank you, Meg. Uh, thank you for this book and for taking the time this evening to chat with me about it. I really needed it selfishly. I know that it was not written for the 39-year-old Midwestern white male teacher, but thank you. Uh, it was the, it was just exactly what I needed. So I appreciate that. And That's so sweet. Leave and I appreciate you, Colby. Thank you, Thank you so much, not only for tonight, but for everything you do for kids and kid lit. I'm very, and, you know, you're very well, fun. we are well beloved. Oh. So we're in a mutual admiration society, I think. Thank you. But it's been to beautiful to be with you. I hope we get to hang out again someday. Jeez, come on. Yes, people. I'm almost vaccinated. I have one more shot to go Yay. at the end of April. So I'm, I'm excited. And and then hopefully we'll all be together. I, I'm missing. I'm sure yeah. you feel the same way. I'm missing all my book friends. I just miss the energy. I'm a better teacher when I'm with people like-minded and getting a chance to learn from people. And I miss that energy yeah. this year. So final question, and you've touched on this topic. It's the last question I always ask. What is your hope for this book? Mm. My hope for this book is, is largely what happened to you with this book, which is um, that people fall in love with Mercy um, and and take her take her and her family into their hearts sort of as their own. I would I'd love for folks to really feel like they're always asking the question, hmm, I wonder what's happening with the Suarez these days. Um, that's really what I'd like to see for kids to just love it to for kids to fall in love with the book. Um, that's really the, the fun, the magic of it from our perspective, right? I write what's in my heart and then I send it out. But the beautiful closing loop is when, when you see kids connect with it, then I don't know. I don't, there's, there's almost no way to describe what that feels like for an author. That's At beautiful. least for me. Well, yeah. thank you again. As you write book three, I know bad things are going to happen, but you've mm -hmm. really made us fall very hard for this character. So don't be too mean to her. And <laughs> like, because I can't handle it. Like, maybe by the time the third one comes out, but. Okay. Wait. I'll think of you. No advice. No advice there. I'll have uh, you on my yeah. shoulder as I'm typing. A little angel. Don't worry. Crown, like hello, me. <laughs> friends, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the time. Make sure you pre-order this book so that you can have it the Tuesday. Is it come out April fifth? April sixth. April sixth. Right. Okay, so you, right. yeah, but well, you as long as you get it ordered before then, you get a chance to get that free copy. You won't regret it. Thank you so much, Meg. Have a great night, everyone. Stay safe out there. Happy reading. Good night, everybody. Bye.